In 2009, paranormal researcher Fiona Broom coined the phrase the Mandela Effect after she realized that she had a false memory of the date on which former South African president Nelson Mandela had passed away. Since then, people have started noticing similar instances in movies, series, books, historical events, and in their everyday lives. They claim that certain elements of the past have been changed, and many of those who subscribe to this theory believe it was caused by CERN when they powered the Large Hadron Collider for the first time in September of 2008, causing irrevocable changes to our past. Number 10. When talking about the Mandela Effect, movies are almost always mentioned, as there have been many instances where people remember a line, a character, or a certain scene in a movie, only to learn that they've been remembering it wrong for years or even decades. There are many famous examples including Star Wars, The Wizard of Oz, Disney's Cinderella, and even The Silence of the Lambs that are said to have been altered, and it's left moviegoers completely baffled. Another example of this has cropped up in recent times, and in this case it involves the James Bond movie Moonraker, which was released in June of 1979 and starred Roger Moore as James Bond. The film saw the return of one of the franchise's most popular villains, Jaws who sported a set of metal teeth that were virtually indestructible. This time, though, there was a twist to his part of the tale, as he had a love interest, a woman named Dolly. The two characters differed in several ways. He was a large, imposing man who wouldn't think twice before attacking his enemy, whereas she was a five-foot-tall, nearsighted woman who became part of the villain's world purely by accident. When Jaws and one of his fellow villains crash a cable car into a building in an attempt on Bond's life, He's pulled from the rubble by Dolly, and the two are instantly infatuated with each other, and she accompanies him on his further endeavors in the movie. They seem like a very odd couple, but there was one similarity that the two shared, and was thought of fondly by fans of the franchise until recently when it was discovered that this was a collective false memory. Many people found it endearing that Jaws had such powerful metal teeth and that Dolly had braces on her teeth. Those who remember this state that her braces are revealed in one particular scene where she smiles broadly at Jaws after helping him out of trouble. But this has caused quite a stir online, as it's now been revealed that Dolly never wore braces and that the entire joke regarding the couple's teeth was a misconception all along. But there are many fans who refuse to believe that this is true, and it's sparked huge debate online. People are finding it hard to accept that such an iconic part of this movie never happened and hence they blame the Mandela Effect. They feel that their memories are correct and that the film has been changed from the original, in which Dolly smiles broadly to reveal her corrective braces. The truth is, she never wore braces in the movie, though admittedly this would have been a very good inclusion, since it would have played nicely off of the fact that Jaws had metal teeth, but sadly, this simply isn't the case. Number 9. Doing research on the Mandela Effect usually results in cases involving song lyrics, movies, and TV shows. But every now and then, someone creates a post online about something that we see on a daily basis, but they then claim that it's been inexplicably changed, seemingly without anyone noticing. These types of cases often include some very strange examples, such as the suggestion that New Zealand has shifted from its original position on the world map, something that has also been said about the positioning of South America which is, of course, impossible. Others claim that certain important dates, such as Thanksgiving, have been changed, or that certain name brands are now spelled differently than they were in the past, a good example of this being the popular breakfast cereal Fruit Loops. But now, a new Mandela Effect mystery has emerged regarding something that most of us would have seen many times before. The positioning of engines on passenger airplanes, such as Boeings or Airbuses, a YouTuber called Moneybags73 has uploaded a video to his channel in which he explains that he distinctly remembers the engines on these planes being tucked securely under the wings, and that he's seen this on many occasions throughout his life. But he recently became aware that this has now changed, and not just on modern planes. When he noticed that the engines now protrude from beneath the wing, making them almost completely visible to passengers on the plane, he was completely dumbstruck. In the video, he states that he was watching another YouTuber's channel when he noticed how bizarre the planes in the video looked, 
and he then realized that it was because the engines didn't seem to be sitting in the correct position. He then produces several images of planes that he found online and points out that they just look off since the engines should be beneath the wings rather than protruding from the front. At one point, he admits that he may be mistaken since the first images are of modern planes, but he then searches for older model planes and is completely taken aback when he realizes that the engines are placed in the same areas on those as on modern models. He finds it hard to explain what's going through his mind as he's uncertain whether he merely has a faulty memory or if the past really has somehow been changed and he can be heard saying over and over again that the planes just don't look right. Further into the video, he comes across a photo of a Delta Airlines plane and states that this one looks closer to the planes that he has in his memory, since the engines are set a little further back, but he still doesn't know what to make of it. But many people have pointed out that different planes have different configurations when it comes to the placement of their engines, since they have different weights and lengths depending on their size. Others suggested that he may only have looked at a plane's engines while he was sitting on board the plane, and that the engines would have been partially obscured from his view, making it seem as though they were tucked under the wing. While most commenters stated that they remember these engines as they are today, there are also many who agree with him, since they remember them being further back, and once again, they think that the Mandela effect may have something to do with it. Number 8. Those of us who are 80s TV show fans will remember a show which is considered to be one of the best to come out of that era, which aired in September of 1982 and went on to become a favorite in most households. The show in question is called Knight Rider and features a man named Michael Knight, played by David Hasselhoff, who's given a new face, new identity, and a car called Kit, short for Knight Industries 2000, which is not only fast, but borders on being sentient. The car is able to speak to Michael, providing him with backup on many occasions, and also has a range of weapons and special features, such as the ability to jump over obstacles at the push of a button, driving itself to any desired location, and it even has heat sensors that could detect movement behind walls. Needless to say, the duo was virtually unbeatable, and in a very short time, the show became massively popular. Kit was one of its most loved characters, despite being a car, and soon thousands of kids were playing with toy models of the modified Trans Am. People also took a lot of notice of the car's interior, specifically the gadgets that could be found on the center console. Lights moved back and forth to show that Kit was active. Different buttons served different functions, and we could even see Kit's voice represented by three strips of light that moved up and down in relation to its speech. And this is where the Mandela Effect mystery comes into play. A discussion has started online as to where these two strips of light were located, and there's much disagreement to say the least. While most people remember the lights being positioned on the car's dashboard, others state that they have clear memories of it being somewhere on the car's center console instead. And since they watched countless episodes of the show, they refuse to admit that they might be mistaken. One Reddit user has been left completely baffled by this revelation and at first he thought that it may originally have been positioned on the center console and then later moved. But when he rewatched episodes from the first season, he realized that while some of the layout in the car was indeed changed, the voice box was always in the same spot. The post resulted in a slew of comments, with people agreeing that the voice box's position has now been changed, while others insist that it's always been in the same spot that it's in now. One man added that he'd once had the opportunity to sit in the car many years ago, and that he was surprised to find that the voice box was on the dashboard, despite being a huge fan who had seen all the episodes. Others tried to offer an explanation for the mix-up. They pointed out that whenever Kit's voice box was filmed, it was done using an extreme close-up, likely because this footage was filmed later and then edited into the existing footage. When the voice box wasn't lit up, most people didn't take notice of it, since there was usually something else going on that drew their focus, and so it's an easy mistake to make, resulting in many people having what they believe to be false memories. The fact that Michael looks down and to the right whenever he talks to Kit has added even more confusion since this would suggest that the voice box was situated on the center console, and hence this is considered by many to be a Mandela Effect mystery. Number 7. American Gothic is a famous painting created by artist Grant Wood in 1930, and it's still considered to be a great piece of art today. The painting depicts a man and a woman standing in front of a house, the man holding a pitchfork in front of him. 
both characters have solemn expressions on their faces. And while some people find the imagery to be rather disturbing for some reason, others look at it as it reveals the artist's ability to portray emotion while still using clean lines. The piece won a bronze medal at the 1930 Annual Exhibition at the Art Institute of Chicago, and it was then purchased by the Institute where it's still being kept today. After being awarded this prize, a photo of the painting was shown in the Chicago Evening Post, and it was an immediate sensation. There are also some interesting facts attached to the piece. Not many people know that the two characters in the painting were based on two real people, the artist's sister and his dentist. When it comes to the meaning behind the piece, it remains debatable, since Woods would often change these according to what would be popular at the time. The house was also inspired by a real building in Eldon, Iowa, that Woods came across while he was visiting the area in the summer of 1930. He thought that the Gothic-style window was rather pretentious for such a small house, and hence he was instantly drawn to it. He sketched the building on the back of an envelope and later used that sketch as a reference for the house that we can see in the background of the painting. It's an iconic painting that's well known all over the world, which makes the fact that it's at the center of a Mandela Effect mystery all the more baffling. It all has to do with one aspect, the direction in which the farmer's wife is looking. People claim that they remember her looking directly ahead, copying the gaze of the farmer, and that it has recently been changed to show her looking at him instead. The fact is that neither of these claims are correct. It's easy to see that she isn't looking at the farmer, but she also isn't looking straight ahead. Instead, it seems she's looking to her left and seemingly off into the distance at something that the viewer can't see. This has left many people perplexed since they feel that they've either been betrayed by their own memories or that the painting has been altered somehow. But a few Reddit users have attempted to offer up an explanation. They suggested that it all has to do with the perspective of the viewer. They claim that if the painting is viewed directly from the front, the woman seems to be looking to her left. But when it's viewed from the left side, she seems to be looking at the farmer. But this isn't the only Mandela effect regarding this piece. Some people seem to remember that woman being much older and that either she or the farmer used to have glasses on. One man stated that he definitely remembered her having gray hair and that she looked far more dowdy than she does now. The painting has also been featured in many cartoons and sketch shows, and it's possible that people are confusing these with the original, since those depictions weren't always intended to be accurate. Number 6. Most of us will have read about the Mandela Effect online, since it's almost impossible to avoid these days. This is mostly because it's said to affect things that are a part of our everyday lives, such as music, television, and movies. But one important Mandela Effect theory has resulted in a lot of discussion online, since it concerns another important part of people's lives, the Bible. The verse in question is one that will be familiar to millions of people worldwide. It's Isaiah 11, verse 6, which states, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. But it seems that this is causing a lot of confusion among people who believed they knew the verse well and who are only now figuring out that they've been mistaken for many years, despite regularly reading their Bibles. Hundreds of people have spoken up about their recollection of the verse and the fact that they're certain that it's never used to mention a wolf dwelling with the lamb. They maintain that the wolf used to be a lion. The confusion may lie in the fact that in the very next verse, it states that the lion will eat straw like the ox, and it's possible that this imagery has somehow gotten mixed up in people's minds, resulting in false memories shared by a massive group of people, many of whom are religious. One man stated that he remembers doing an art project for his Sunday school class, and that he decided to portray this very verse. He used paper plates to create a lion and a lamb, along with a few other children, and has distinct memories of them painting the lions yellow. Another added that they've experienced multiple instances of the Mandela Effect, but that this particular one has cost them the most consternation since they attended Catholic school when they were young, and always thought that this verse spoke about the lion and the lamb walking together, since it was a striking image in their mind. One user suggested that it was originally a lion and a lamb, but it was gradually changed to a wolf over many centuries, thanks to pieces of art, and eventually it was just changed altogether since the symbolism remains the same. Then there's the theory that it's always been a wolf, but that some teachers and preachers simply got it wrong and taught people about the lion instead, 
resulting in many people having the wrong information, since they don't read that part of the Bible very often. While the Mandela Effect has copped much of the blame in this mystery, some people think it may have something to do with the fact that there are many different versions of the Bible, and some of those may make reference to a lamb and a lion rather than a wolf, but this is very unlikely. This is a debate that will rage on for many years to come, since neither side will be easily convinced, but most people agree that the verse has always spoken about the wolf and the lamb. Number 5. Leonardo da Vinci is known around the world as one of the most prominent polymaths of his time, and indeed in all of history. He was an artist, scientist, engineer, sculptor, theorist, draftsman, and architect, and some of his works are still considered to be priceless today. But he was also an inventor. He was the first to design an air screw, also known as the Leocopter, which would have needed four men to operate, though it likely would not have worked as he intended. Many people credit the invention of the first car to da Vinci, since he was the first to design a self-propelled cart, and since it required no driver, he's often slated as being the first roboteer as well. Though the cart was never built, it's believed that it would have functioned via a spring-driven mechanism that would have driven it forward, but since his drawings of the design aren't comprehensive, we'll likely never know exactly how he intended it to function. But da Vinci wasn't just interested in mechanics, he also had a deep interest in the human body, and in 1490, he created a sketch that just about everyone will recognize, that of the Vitruvian Man, also known as Proportions of Man and Canon of Properties. It's said that the drawing represents the perfect ratios and proportions of a human male, which is made obvious by the symmetry that can be seen in the sketch. It features the figure of a man with his arms stretched out to the side, one set of arms pointing slightly higher than the first. It also shows the man with his legs together and then slightly apart, and the figure is framed by a circle, though it also contains several other shapes in some of da Vinci's notes that can be found above and below the image. There are a few people who aren't familiar with this image, though not everyone is aware of what it's meant to depict. Nonetheless, it's a famous drawing that has been viewed billions of times, and yet is now part of a Mandela Effect case that is leaving a lot of people frustrated and confused. This case focuses on the number of limbs depicted in the drawing, specifically the number of legs it has and used to have, according to those who remember it differently from the image they encounter today. They claim that the man used to have six arms rather than four, and that the image has been altered in recent times thanks to the Mandela effect. Furthermore, they claim that his arms didn't always face in the direction that they do now, but that each of the limbs used to be turned slightly from the last, to show how each of the muscles in the arm would look at that specific angle. Some people added that the third set of arms also used to include a triangle, which would then mean that da Vinci's text at the top and bottom of the drawing would have had to have been changed since there would have been additional data to include. Then there are those who feel that the man's stance has also been changed, since they think that he now looks sort of awkward where he used to look stable in the past. One can only wonder what da Vinci would have thought of the Mandela effect and the fact that it's now being associated with several of his works. Number 4. The Mandela Effect has been mentioned in connection to many movies and some of the most iconic lines ever spoken that are then found to have been misremembered, or according to those who believe it to be real, the Mandela Effect. These instances are completely understandable since none of us have perfect memories, and once a line has been misquoted, there's a good chance that it'll be misquoted again, and again, until the erroneous line is accepted as fact. When it comes to light that the line is something different from the one in people's minds, they look for a plausible explanation and they're unable to find one, and sometimes chalk it up to something like the Mandela Effect, rather than admitting they've made a mistake. This can also be said of certain scenes in some famous movies, where people remember one set of events only to learn that they misremembered the scene and that something entirely different actually took place. But it's far less common for a group of people to remember a specific scene in a movie that actually never existed, which seems to be the case with the 1988 movie Big, which starred Tom Hanks. The plot revolves around a 12-year-old boy who wishes that he could be older after he's denied entry onto a carnival ride since he's too short. He then makes this wish to a coin-operated fortune-telling machine and wakes up the next day to find that he's now a 30-year-old man. When he fails to locate the machine again, he moves to New York where he starts working at a toy company. For a while, he enjoys his job and even receives a promotion and starts a romance with a woman named Susan, 
who's also employed at the company, but eventually he grows weary of adulthood and wishes that he could be 12 years old again. He then learns that the fortune-telling machine has reappeared, and he's turned back into a boy, much to the dismay of Susan. He suggests that she use the machine to turn herself to the same age as him, but she declines and they go their separate ways. The movie ends with him arriving back home. But this ending isn't as simple as it seems. According to some people, many people have stated that they've seen an alternate ending to the movie, in which Susan does use the machine, and she's transformed into a 12-year-old girl. They then claim that there's a scene in which she can be seen sitting in the same class as the main character, but that it now no longer exists. While some people have tried to find a plausible explanation for this, suggesting that the scene may have gone unnoticed by some people since it was at the end of the movie's credits, others are adamant that it was part of the original ending, and it's now simply missing. Others think that the alternate ending may have been unpopular with some audiences, and that it was removed for this reason, but no one has been able to find the footage of this alternate ending, leading many to speculate that it's the result of the Mandela Effect. It's also been suggested that they may be confusing the movie with the TV movie called 14 Going on 30, which has a slightly similar plot, but many of those who claim that the movie has been altered have never seen the TV movie before, and they're at a loss for an explanation. Number 3. The Thinker, a bronze sculpture created by artist August Rodin in 1904, is a very recognizable piece of art. And while most people understand that it's supposed to represent a man deep in thought, there are many other more obscure facts that aren't well known. And it's likely because of this, and the collective false memory, that it's now mentioned in the same breath as the Mandela Effect. One fact that isn't widely known is that the statue is merely part of a bigger work called the Gates of Hell. The full piece features the thinker above a huge set of gates, while three other figures can be seen with their heads bowed together above him. It also features many smaller figures, and it was created to represent the first section of Dante's epic poem, The Divine Comedy, which sees him being guided by Virgil through the different levels of hell and purgatory. Following this, he also visits paradise with the aid of Beatrice, Dante's ideal woman. Rodin worked on the piece for 37 years, but despite all this time and effort, it was never completed, and The Thinker is undoubtedly the most famous part of the piece, but this hasn't stopped it from being included in the mystery that is the Mandela Effect. The problem regards the man in the sculpture's pose. While we all know that it's pensive and even a little moody, many people have the wrong image in their minds, and when they see an image of the piece, they're taken aback. In reality, the man is sitting down, and he has the back of his right hand pressed against his chin while he ponders away but many people claim that this never used to be the case. They remembered him having his hand pressed against his forehead, giving him a more exasperated appearance and mood, as if he's deeply troubled by his own thoughts. This seems to be a common misconception, since many photos taken at the statue show people imitating his pose, only they have their hands pressed to their foreheads rather than their chins, despite standing right next to it. This may seem like a perfectly reasonable explanation, but one man claims that the statue hasn't changed just once, but twice. He was always certain that the hand was placed to the forehead, and when he learned this wasn't the case, he made a mental note and checked images of the piece every day until it changed again. He claims that the hand had first changed to the tip of his chin, and that it's now placed further up towards the mouth. This case is far more far-reaching than one might imagine, as one art book includes a description of the statue, which reads, quote, it appears that Rodin showed himself from his right profile, naked, crouching, his left hand to his forehead. An upper intermediate teacher's book describes it as, quote, a sculpture of a man sitting with his forehead supported by his fist, lost in thought. And so it seems that this mistaken belief has been around for a very long time. Some of the explanations offered for this include the color of the statue, which makes it hard to see the finer details and when viewed from a certain angle, it might look as though the man is resting his forehead on his hand. But since the image is wrongly described, even in some scholarly books, it's far more likely that people just have a false image in their minds and are then surprised when they see the original sculpture with its chin resting on its hand. Number two, the Mandela effect usually describes people remembering something a certain way and then finding out that it's actually completely different. And while some readily admit that they must just have a false memory of it, others are unwilling to make this admission. This seems to be the case with several people who hail from or who have visited the town of Bolton in Greater Manchester, England. Specifically, it centers on the Bolton Museum 
and a specific disc light that they now feel has gone missing, though no evidence has been found that it ever existed. Since the 1960s, some people have visited the museum and have spoken about the massive skeleton of a dinosaur that once was exhibited there. They claim to have clear memories of it since they were impressed by its size and its apparent violent nature. They've even spoken about where the skeleton was displayed, in the museum's main entrance where it stood proudly for all to see. But there's a problem with these recollections since it came to light in 2006 that no dinosaur was ever displayed at the museum despite at least 40 people claiming to have memories of seeing it. Staff members at the museum are just as confused by these claims, since there are no records of such a display ever being present. And yet the leader of Bolton's council and its former mayor, Alan Rushton, also claimed to have clear memories of it. And in an interview, he stated, quote, Am I supposed to accept that my eyes deceive me, or this enormous dinosaur was a figment of my imagination? I remember as a schoolboy going on visits to the museum and standing in awe looking at it. I raised the matter when I was on the arts committee, but we were never able to find any trace of it. One woman, Alice Sainsbury, remembers taking her two children to see the dinosaur and that she used to laugh at them craning their necks to get a proper look at it. But years after that, she befriended the museum's curator and he also has no recollection of the dinosaur, leaving Alice baffled. This case caused such a stir that in January of 2006, the Bolton News published a piece in which they asked members of the public to come forward with any evidence of the dinosaur display, but to date, none has been presented. Following this, the town council scoured their records in an effort to find even a mention of the display, but they were unable to find anything to suggest that it ever existed. It's been suggested that those who remember the dinosaur may have been confusing it with another museum that they visited. But for more than 40 people to make that same mistake, it seems like a reach. What is certain is that if the display ever existed, it would have been in the museum between the Second World War and the 1970s, since the photo from the museum's opening proved that it wasn't present at that time. But those who remain adamant that they saw it at the Bolton Museum even claim to remember the type of dinosaur they saw, though some have stated that it was a brontosaurus while others think it was a Tyrannosaurus rex, but this would be an easy mistake to make. Others have suggested that the dinosaur was on display at some point, but that it was then loaned to another museum. But the suggestion that museum staff would have simply forgotten about this is laughable, especially since there would have been documentation detailing the loan. Whether this is the result of the Mandela effect remains up for debate, but it is certain that this is a mystery that will not be going away anytime soon. Number 1. Another 80s TV show that's now being mentioned in the Mandela Effect cases is The A-Team, which was a massively popular show among adults and children alike, since it provided them with a lot of action and not a lot of violence. The plot revolves around four men who served together during the Vietnam War. During this time, they were ordered to carry out a covert mission, during which they were supposed to rob a bank. They carried out the mission successfully, only to find that their commander had lost his life and since they could no longer prove that they were carrying out his orders, they were accused of the crime and sent to a maximum security stockade. But they escaped from the stockade and made their way back to the US, where they then remained on the run from the government, helping as many people as they could along the way. The series remained hugely popular for many years, and it spawned merchandise that appealed to children, including action figures of the four main characters. Another very popular toy that was released was the team's iconic van that they traveled in, since it was a huge part of the show and instantly recognizable. The van, a 1983 GMC Vendura, allowed them to carry any cargo and weapons that they happened to need each week. And it's hard to imagine that anyone could have a false memory of the vehicle since it's so iconic. But it seems that the van has now become part of the Mandela Effect discussion since people seem to remember the van being painted completely black with a red line running down the side, but this simply isn't the case. The reality is that the van had a lighter color above the red line and black paint below it. This was done intentionally, especially for the show, but some people refuse to believe that this is true since they're massive fans of the show and remember the vehicle being all black. They claim to have had the van as a toy when they were a child and that they would have remembered if it was two-toned but it is of course possible that some of the merchandise was of lesser quality and didn't depict the van as it should have been. Others believe that it might have had something to do with the fact that the team was always on the run and hence had to keep a low profile. In people's minds, an all-black van would stand out far less than one that has a custom paint job and hence have false memories of the color. 
One man stated, when he heard of this mystery, he immediately took his old A-Team DVD set and saw that the van was indeed all black, but he offered no evidence to back up his claim. There's also the possibility that since some TV sets in the 80s weren't of the best quality, they may not have displayed the colors correctly, and hence led people to believe that the van was completely black. But there are many people who are certain that the Mandela Effect is responsible. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.